Hi everyone, uh, my name is Laura, this is Sadaf, and today we're going to be talking to you about cannabinoids. So, first of all, what are cannabinoids? There are actually three types of cannabinoids. Most of you have probably heard of the herbal ones that come from uh, the cannabis plants, so that's pot or weed, uh, with the active ingredient uh, being THC. Then there's also synthetic cannabinoids uh, that are actually produced in the lab. And uh, for example, spice, we are going to be talking to you about weed and spice a little bit later on. And then there's also natural cannabinoids that actually occur in humans and animals. So everybody in this room actually has cannabinoids in them um, at any time. Uh, so cannabis um, cannabinoids have been used for thousands and thousands of years. They've been around way before the modern society. Uh, there's actually recently been found in some uh, tombs in Egypt. There's like a little bit of hashish right here. Uh, so they've, cannabis has been used for as long as people have been around pretty much. Uh, but today we can see that marijuana and synthetic marijuana, so pot and spice, are actually uh, the most used in high school students, so in people your age. Uh, their marijuana is 36.4% of high school students have declared that ha they have actually used it um, at some point in the past year. Uh, and we can see that compared to the other drugs, um, they can actually be a problem because they're really, really abused. Um, so how do cannabinoids work? Uh, we've talked to, to you about the lock and key mechanism. In our case, with cannabinoids, we can see these little receptors here, which can, can be the lock. They're called uh, cannabinoid receptors, and these neurotransmitters, um, the keys, which when they fit the, the cannabinoid receptor, they activate it, and that leads to a series of events that give the effects that, uh, the physical and uh, physiological effects, uh, and psychological effects that uh, weeds or spice give you, like munchies, or euphoria, or relaxation. Um, so, and now Sadaf's gonna talk to you a little bit about weed. All right. So we are, as you guys might know, other names for it, marijuana, uh, THC, or pot, is one of the com uh, one of the very most common. Wait, what did you? The button the, at the bottom. Is it on the screen? Oh, it's in the switch mode. It's extended. It's on the screen. <laughs> so I'm going to be telling you guys about cannabis, or as you guys might not, or as you guys might commonly know it, weed. So it's. Yeah. All right. So um, THC is amongst uh, many chemicals found in the cannabis plant or the weed plant, and it's what gives uh, the physical high or the feelings of when you smoke the weed and you get high. And this is very similar to a natural chemical that is made in our body that's there for normal function. And when THC gets in our body, uh, it kind of disrupts that normal function. So if um, you were, you know, using uh, weed, this is going to cause you to um, behave differently. And um, over time, if you keep using it a lot, it's going to actually add up to more serious and permanent changes. So, um, Cannabis itself, or weed, is the plant right here, the leaf, and this leaf can actually uh, be processed into a lot of variety of different types um, of forms. Like, uh, they can be used uh, as hashish, it's like com compressed and processed to become more concentrated, or these days it's really popular to use oil or wax, and even this, uh, these different varieties um, can be used in, or can be taken and consumed in a lot of other different varieties, like uh, using them in pipes or bongs, or vaporizing them, or rolling them in paper, or eating them um, in food. Now, um, when you take this, um, this can this is stored in your fat cells and can stay there for a long period of time, depending on how much you use. Um, it could uh, stay there for even up to two months. So, um, if you go and take a drug test. Depending on how much you used before, it could show up even two months after your last use. Now, some of the short-term effects of THC um, can last from an hour up to 24 hours, depending on how you are, uh, 
how long you or how you use it and how much you use. So if you were to eat it in like an edible form that would last in your uh, system and uh, for a really long time, um, for a longer time than if that same amount were to be smoked. And um, so this gives you, um, other than increased appetite and pleasure, it also gives you impaired thinking and memory, impaired coordination, and there's also dry mouth, red eyes, and paranoia. A lot of people feel really paranoid when they um, smoke weed and they think bad things are gonna happen to them. Now, one question is, is marijuana legal? And this is a really confusing question and it really depends on where you are and how much you have and what your age is. So it's basically um, illegal in most places and um, there are recently some states that have decriminalized marijuana and um, what does decriminalization mean? Decriminalization is not the same thing as legalization. So when uh, decriminalization basically means that if a person is caught uh, with a small amount of marijuana uh, for personal use, they're not going to get into um, criminal um, you know, consequences. They're not going to go to jail um, and they're not going to get a criminal record. But they do um, get a fine. It's like a, treating it like a, a ticket, like a jaywalking ticket. And some uh, states like Colorado and Washington have actually legalized. That means that people who are over 21 can just go in a weed shop and just buy themselves weed. Now you might think, oh, okay, so I can just go to Colorado and Washington and legally smoke it. Not so much because the government still considers it illegal. And so if the government wants you to get in trouble, you could definitely get in trouble, even if you're in Colorado or Washington. Is marijuana addictive? That's another really good question, and it depends on how you define the word addiction. People who use marijuana report having really strong cravings for uh, marijuana, and um, they really want to smoke weed like right before they do things that are already fun themselves, like going to see a movie or going to a park. They all think, oh, if I could just smoke before it, it would be way more fun. And um, these... Um, um, so when you do smoke it and you do get high, that might last for a few hours, but if you keep doing that, that will add up. And over time, it will change your brain's normal function and circuitry in a way that um, it's, um, it's completely changing your behavior, like uh, motivation. You might lose your motivation in uh, doing things or pursuing goals that you normally really like, but after um, you know, you're just smoking weed all the time, you lose that motivation and all you want to do is just go get high and you become content with that. Another thing is that people um, think that just because you don't overdose on weed and uh, you can't directly die from smoking it alone that it's safe and it's fine and you know there's no harm. But that mentality itself could be very harmful because if you are going into it with that mentality and you're using it a lot over time, just like anything else that you do, it does become a habit and it does change your brain and you know um, it, ca it uh, harms your finances, your relationships, again, your motivation, and your overall behavior. And um, you know, no one wants to be that old guy who is still smoking weed. And um, if you do feel like you are smoking weed a lot and frequently, and you know you're not just doing it socially, and you're doing it every day, or you're waking up, and all you want to do is get high, you should probably talk to someone because. Um, you know, if, if you continue that, then the problem will only become bigger and, um, you know, it's just going to be harder to stop. So we gave you guys the pamphlets. There's more information in there. You guys should definitely look at them. And if you think that you have a problem, definitely get help. Okay, so I'm sure everybody has heard about weed, but I'm curious how many people have heard about spice? What do you... Okay, so some of you have. So... What is spice? Hmm? Charcoal. What kind of spice? <laughs> oh. oh, well, synthetic cannabinoids. <laughs> so what is spice? Spice is actually not, you know, like spice. basil or whatever. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, that's good, yeah. Spice is actually a synthetic cannabinoid. So spice can either refer to the brand spice or just any herbal blend that mimics the effects of um, cannabinoids. Uh, if you haven't heard about spice, but you've heard about K2, Black Mamba, Bombay Blue, or Genie, 
Uh, that's pretty much exactly the same. That's spice. That's what you're taking. Um, what's very interesting about spice is that okay, so it's a very very new drug. It's been on the market since 2004, so it hasn't been studied very much. And you, it comes in these uh, little packets that have ingredients on the back of them. And if you actually take a look at the ingredients and you read the ingredients, they uh, have taken some packets, analyzed in the laboratory, and realized that there's a bunch of ingredients there that are on the packets that actually are not found in the herbal blends in the, inside the package. And there's a lot of uh, ingredients that are not mentioned, especially synthetic cannabinoids. Uh, so when maybe you look at the ingredients and you think, oh, okay, this this looks safe, but actually not a lot of people actually know what are in all these packets. So how does spice make you feel? People take it for the desired effects, but there's a lot of undesired effects that come along with them. Uh, the effects are somewhat similar to weed, but the negative effects uh, are much more extreme than weed in spice. Uh, some of them are anxiety, paranoia, suicidal thoughts, and uh, depression. Uh, most of these undesired effects aren't as prevalent in weed, but in spice. But a lot of them have been imported uh, with use of spice. So what happens when you stop doing spice? Uh, the withdrawal effects again are somewhat similar to weed, but um, they're much more they're much more extreme. So you you can have trouble sleeping, you can have a lot of nightmares, you become very anxious, you become very paranoid. You can only think about get yeah, like everything that you're thinking. Everything that you want is to take the to find the drug again, and this is gonna interfere with your uh, day to day life, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna provoke a lot of social problems. And actually, if you can use this report, developing significant tolerance to synthetic cannabinoids, so to spice, uh, so you're gonna which means that you will need more and more of the amount of drug to get the desired effect that you want. Um, so how does spice work? Spice acts. Like the like like weed like THC which is the active ingredient in weed, um, it binds to the same cannabinoid receptors. It also crosses the blood brain barrier quickly, which just means that you get the desired effect very quickly. Uh, but it is up to a hundred times as strong as THC, which means that all those negative effects that we talked about are going to be much more extreme. And because um, spice when spice is broken down in your body. All those leftovers actually have the ability to still uh, bind to the cannabinoid receptor, so the receptors are still activated even after it's broken down, which means all those negative effects are going to take so much longer to go away. So the legal status of spice is a really complicated problem because um, they're really, really hard to control for. Because once you, uh, once people make one substance illegal, they change the formula a little bit, just like bath salts, and um, they, they put in something else. So the biggest, biggest problem with spice is that nobody really knows what is inside. Because they, it hasn't, it's, like, as I said, it's only been around since 2004. It hasn't been really, really been studied in a um, research setting. So most of the symptoms that we know about spice are coming from medical reports of people who have been admitted after spice abuse or from autopsies that fo followed that after uh, people have been um, after spice abuse. So when if you think about it, when you use spice, you're kinda like a guinea pig. You don't you don't know exactly what's gonna happen to you. You're experimenting yourself and I'm not it's not for me it's not a thing that I, I would I would like to do.